guys, we're gonna show you how to do the eight by eight training. That is eight sets of eight reps with a very specific structure. Do not break 20 second rest in between the sets. Now you're gonna do multiple exercises and you get to rest 90 seconds in between the exercises, but 20 seconds in between the rests of each exercise. So today we're gonna to do back and, uh, what are we doing today, Mr. Steven? We're doing back and abdominals. So choose, we chose one large muscle group and these are the exercises that are written on here. We're gonna go through those for you. If you do not have the ability to do this exercise or you have an injury or something, these exercises are interchangeable. Now the ones I chose hit the entire back. So you don't wanna just choose everything for a back pull, everything or everything rows because then you're gonna work one part of the muscle group. But once again, they are interchangeable. Just try to be smart about it. So this first one is uh, deadlifts. Go ahead, Steven, hop into this. It's bent leg. He's gonna do eight reps and then rest 20 seconds and do eight again. Great, he's got his versa grips on, so he's not worried about his fingers. He's got his heart rate monitor on. A lot of guys have run into that problem or, well, I can't wear my heart rate monitor because uh, my versa grips are on and it's, it's a huge wrist type of strap there. And what I explained to him is no, just loosen the watch and roll it up. What's your heart rate, bud? 124. 124, not bad for the first set, getting warmed up. Now he had to pick a weight. Now Stephen could do a lot more than 50s. He had to pick a weight that he could do 64 reps of though, with only that specific 20 second rest. Only rest in 20 seconds makes those 50s a lot heavier. Come on, buddy. One. Notice his breathing. Jump. Breathing's everything. Now I don't care how low you go, I want an arch in the back. Show me an arch. You're rounding your back right now. I don't want, I don't want you around your back. Back up. Yep. There it is. Bend your legs more if you want to get lower to the ground. Okay. Okay, so what I was talking to Steven about is, is when he's doing his rep, sometimes you'll go down, and if you want to keep going low, keep going low. But if you're going like this, or you got your bent legs and you go to here, and then you go like this, that's where we can get injured. Now, there is a bent back uh, a rounded back, go ahead, deadlift, but it's much, much safer to keep that back either uh, with a bowl of soup in it, like I like to talk, or straight, flat. You're still rounding your back, buddy. Sit into it a little more. There it is. In fact, I want you to keep your line of sight up there. If you break that line of sight, you've gone down too low. Up. There we go. Up. Okay. Now, another thing he's doing, which is going to drive me crazy, Steven. You're educating people here, buddy. Come on now. When he sets down his weight, guys, anytime you're going to get injured, it's usually picking up the weight, getting in position, or getting rid of it. So, Steven, I've got him doing his, his deadlift, right? It's right here. He's up. Back super bent, right? Not right here. Right here the whole time, right? Comes back up. Now, if he sets it down like this, that goes against uh, being safe. And so that very last rep, if you lose your head mentally, you're gonna get hurt. It's 50 pounds, it's not, not enough to hurt him. If you start adding up a lot of weight, and you set the weight down like that, you're gonna get hurt. Go ahead, bud. Okay. There we go, that's a straight back. Feel the difference? Yeah, I hit my hamstrings, so I'm kind of babying. Yeah, bend your legs, that's why you can bend your legs. There you go. There you go. Where you are right now, bud? 140, all right. That shows effort. It's going up. Another 20 seconds, take your rest again. That line of sight really does help because then you can <coughs> know how low you're actually. Now, I'm gonna get killed by exercise scientists saying don't do that because it, it messes up your back. I was telling him to do that because I wanted him to get his back into a position that he could remember and then for the rest of the reps of his life, he would just follow his line of sight with his eyes. So if I'm here and I go down, I don't try to keep my eyes on you, I just follow the line of sight with my eyes and then I come back up. We wanna keep looking up, we wanna do that. But if you're cracking your neck like that, that's bad. So it's an example of how to find the position and then you know, forget the example and just keep that position with your eyes following the movement. All right, that's a flat back. Now let the eyes follow your line of motion. So your head's right here, your head right here. Yeah. Now let your head go down with your body. Let there your head go down with your body. Just let your head go down with your body. See how you're doing this? 
All the way down? You can do this if you want to. Just don't move your neck. See how the angle of your neck is changing positions? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Well, we're, I mean, this is coaching, guys. This is, I mean, we don't do it all perfect all the way. So this is what he's doing that I don't like. When he goes down, instead of, see this being just straight? Instead of being like this, he's doing this. Now, if he wants to keep his back straight, that's fine. Just don't spend a lot of time with your neck cranked like that. I'm gonna get screamed at in these videos. <laughs> Come on, bud. Okay. Think about this staying straight the whole time. You gotta drop your head, bud. Right there, just leave it there. There you go, now come back up. Okay, but don't arch the back now. Okay, hold this. Um, I love Steven, I love Steven, okay? But he's not doing it the way I ask him to and he keeps ignoring me and I don't know why. This is what I want. And, and guys, that's why I make these videos. You're gonna have to practice sometimes 100 reps. I once sat in a video for 25 minutes, 25 minutes explaining to somebody how to do a rear delt bent over row. And it was 20 minutes, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a warm up in, in some of our exercises. So it, it's perfectly fine to not have your body either functionally, it can't get into that position. A lot of the positions we, we, we choose, people have injuries or this or that, or they're just not used to doing it that way and they've gotta see it done the right way or, or uh, the way that they're, that they're trying to do to get it. So I'm gonna show Steven right now what, what it is exactly that I want. So this is a bent leg deadlift. So anytime I pick up the weight, I'm never gonna go like this and pick it up. And I'm never gonna drop it like this. Because that's never in the, in the movement will we do that. So I'm gonna bend my legs, do my back as hard as I can, get real strong. Bend my legs, keep my back position. There you go. Are you pushing up through your heels? I'm, I'm even, I'm even. Okay. Now, is my back arched at all? Yeah. Which way? Holes. Okay. This is what you're doing. Okay. We want it the other way. All right, we're gonna do another set. Let's go, buddy. You got a little bit longer rest than that for uh, the educational example. Okay, now I'm gonna stop him. What is your fixation with going all the way to the ground? I'm, I guess I'm going for like a stretch. No, we're going for ripping apart muscle tissue here. We can stretch, that's what the yoga girls do. Now, if this were a barbell with 45 pound dumbbells, or, uh, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> 45 pound plates, how low would you be going? Until they hit the ground. Which is much higher than where you're going. Yeah. So I don't, we don't have to go all the way to the ground okay. in order to work the muscle groups intended. And in fact, we're actually going out of position and being unsafe doing so. So go down to where it feels a nice big rip in your back. Okay, I need you to make a bowl soup right there. That's much better. Beautiful. That arch. Yep. Perfect. All right. Hold each one. Come on. Okay. Now, when um, when you're doing stiff-legged deadlifts and these are bent leg, you're gonna feel a lot of pressure right here. And that's what he's saying, Dave. When I'm when I go down, I feel a lot of pressures, and I got a hamstring issue. In his defense, he's got a hammy issue, and this is this is firing off on that. What I want is then, if that's the case, the more you bend your legs, the less your hamstrings do the work. Okay, once again, in the stiffies, it's a lower back and a, and a lot of hamstrings. This shouldn't be as much hamstrings. So as he goes down, if he starts to feel it right here in his hamstrings, that's fine. Bend into it. Just either way around, you wanna keep that from doing this. Or even right here, it's, it's still kind of a hump. We want this. Okay, and when I stand up, I've got my arch, I'm keeping it, and then I go back down again. Do one more rep. Okay. Do this one to the side so the camera can see it. That's a straight back, friends. Can't ask for any more than that. As soon as you see 
a bow right here. Now do it the way you were doing it. No, I was, he could do it that way right now because this isn't very heavy weight, this is volume training. Now do it the way we learned again. Beautiful, that to me all day. Now I can't get killed on my videos. Exercise sign, guys, you leave me alone. <laughs> Okay, good job, bud. Okay. Now we get a 90 second rest in between the next uh, exercise, and that is today going to be, what is it, what do you think it is? Uh, lat. Bent over rows, good man. So now we're gonna go into bent over rows. Do you think you can do this weight? Yeah. Okay, uh, it says you can use a bench, so that's when you put your, your one leg down and you're doing the go to my index if you wanna see that with a bench. Today we're gonna try to uh, stick with the theme, and that's burning lots of calories in one place. So I'm gonna have him put his forearm right here, grab the weight, and go. 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 Then switch arms and do the other arm. All right. And is this knee up off the ground? Yep. What's your heart rate for fun? 130. One, 134. It was 137. Straighten that leg a little bit more. Okay, now the idea of this position is to get his back somewhat parallel to the ground. Keep going. A lot of guys will get into this and, and they'll go to here. I kind of want down here, because that's parallel to the ground. Right here is a little more rear delts and it's, it's not the exercise. Beautiful. The elbow needs to come back and break the barrier of the back. When he's bringing his elbow up, he's not bringing it to here. He's got to get it back to here somehow. And that's really very hard to count. Now lower that back. Beautiful. Anytime you're wondering if you're in the wrong position, kick your hips down a little bit. No, nope, straighten that back. Straighten that leg. There you go. Now what happens is if you kick that heel, that hip that wants to come up down, you're also making sure that as you're here, you're not here doing them. You're as far this way as you can do them. Now your body's gonna cheat always that way. That's fine. You're gonna notice yourself doing that. What I'm saying is, is when you're paying attention to that hip back here, Try to drop it, just a tiny bit, and that will square you off. You're always gonna be a little bit off uh, in that position, but good job, how you feel? All right. 140, 150. All right, 150, that's up 20 beats. It's going up. <laughs> it's going up, going okay. Up. Switch arms again and go again. See guys, he's training in, in what, five square feet here? I wasn't taking up some room, so much room, a little bit less. All these muscle groups are engaged. If, uh, if I was gonna say anything, try to put as much weight as you can on the heel. And then don't forget to flex this arm because it looks really cool in the mirror when you're knocking these out. <laughs> don't think we don't think about looking cool too, guys. We do. It's a strong man position. Throw down on that shoulder. Yeah, show some, show him some vascularity. There you go. Come on, show him some chest. Flex that thing. Hold position. Make all these other guys wonder why you're not moving everywhere. What the heck? Only this side of his body's moving. Why, why isn't he, why isn't he cheating? Why isn't he jumping up around there and stuff? Perfect one, buddy. That was very good. Okay. That was good. You were fighting me on the last one. That was perfect. 160. 160. Do you ever do that when you're doing these? If you happen to be next to the mirror and you're like, oh, inspired and motivated. Give me some more. <laughs> you ever, do you ever get that? Yeah. Like, you don't expect yourself to look as good as sometimes the gym top light makes you look. All right, we're going to do one more set of this and get into the other one. Guys, I think this is enough example of how to do this. He's picked the right weight. He's struggling. The first few are going to be a little easier than the last. This should take him up to, what, 24 reps per arm? He's got to do 64 reps per arm. You can imagine by the time he gets to into the 50s on his reps, he's going to be hurt. Now, notice the Versa grips once again, how fast they, they, they flip around the dumbbell. I don't want you wasting a bunch of time. A lot of times these straps and these other things, guys are going to spend a good 5, 10 seconds getting the weight on their arm. You get a 20 second rest. That means no rest in between arms. Hurry. Right. 160. Run 60, you're staying there. Good job, buddy. That shows a lot of resistance for back. Okay, so um, now what are we at? Now we're gonna go from, and, and you notice I'm using my phone. This doesn't seem very professional. Emily's on his phone. You guys, this is what I want you to do. This is what I do at the gym. If I'm looking at my phone, it's not because I'm typing to somebody or texting. I usually put it on airplane mode. It's because I'm listening to music and or I'm, I'm making sure I am somewhere during my workout. I have this thing on my phone in my pictures, why? Because if I'm following something structured, I go to the gym and I just do what I think it said, well that's not something structured, that's me doing what I think it said. And usually my mind will have me do something easier than what it says. So that's why I keep this thing to stay accountable and, and I get so lightheaded. I, I forget what the next exercise is. In fact, I don't care. 
I care about the moment, the right now, the weights I'm lifting, coming up on your 90 second rest. So I will shut up and we'll get into it. Uh, dumbbell pullover, love these. Yep. Uh, these awesome. Grab your bench right there, if you wouldn't mind. Dumbbell pullovers are, uh, are a fun movement, guys. <laughs> they were supposed to, you know, one of the old <clears throat> urban myths is that it will uh, expand your rib cage. Give you some, when you, when you turn a man to the side, make you, make you thicker, right? So, I don't know if I believe all that, but I believe the guys that, uh, that say to do it, so I do it anyway. This is a great exercise, Stephen, hop on. Your 90 seconds is up. Now, show them how to, uh, let's show them a little safer way to do this. So, I, there's two ways I like doing this, because when you start to get into really heavy weights, especially at the gym, when you're not in, a, in a, an apartment gym complex, where the weights usually will go up to 50s, you're gonna slide into your back, slide on your back. Now reach over and grab it. See, now he's in a position where it's a little safer. First thing I like to do is set it on my chest. Set it on your chest. It goes from there directly onto my chest. So I know I'm underneath it, I know I'm safe. Then I do a tricep press. Now I'm in position, make sure my hands are good. And I drop my butt as the weight goes backwards. Yep. And I bring my butt up at the same time. Beautiful. You gotta get this top shot. This is chest and lats. This is Pretty awesome. Come on. You're gonna do eight. Those are perfect. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Boop. Set it down. Good man. Slide out. That's one way to that's one way to slide out, or from that same position, I'll show you the other one. Had a guy show me this on set one day, I thought it was pretty cool. So I've set the weight down, I'll have my hand on it. We're dropping to position just to make sure it doesn't fall. Now I'm here, feeling comfortable, drop my butt, I'm squared up, grab the weight, get it over on my chest. All right, make sure we're good. Drop it down, drop my butt, bring the weight down. The farther away, now the trick is, the farther away it is from your body, the more chest you're working. The little bit more of a 90 degree on the elbows, that's a little bit more back in serenus. You'll notice that. Either way around, he did them perfect. Now you bring it up. Okay, we're up. Now we set it. The other way to get off, knees and down. Or, I like personally this one, depends on if the, if the weight, if the bench is structured, I just set it down, simply side up, and pop up. So, two different ways to get off. Steven, go ahead and go, buddy. That was not a 20 second rest. <laughs> Now his fingers are wrapped around this thing perfectly. We'll get a we'll get a shot of that here in a second. In fact, let's get a shot of uh, his fingers. He's got his thumbs wrapped around the fingers. Hey, it's beautiful. Good job, buddy. Now another way that I found that I really like to do these as well, that's kind of a, the perfect form. And uh, I manipulated another way to do these is throw it up, get square, get back, jump my butt, and leave my butt down. Do you kind of feel it right down in here as well? I love that. If you are actually dropping your hips, and, 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 and following the breathing pattern that you're supposed to be, which means breathing, a lot of guys hold their breath during the set, then you're gonna notice a rip in your lowest ab. A lot of incline stuff I work on, thank you Steven, go ahead and hop in. A lot of incline stuff I'll do for, uh, for, for, for abs has to do with almost a pullover. And the further away my hands get, it'll literally rip right here on that lowest ab. Beautiful. What he's talking about, don't mind me, right here. When he goes down, that stretch, right there. Where you're talking, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get that all the time. Beautiful. Take this stretch. Now, one of the mistakes you can make is to bring it too far forward. You don't want to lose it over yourself. Where's it going to land, guys? We don't want that. So, just make sure that as you're following that momentum up, you can stop that momentum. Beautiful. Come on. There we go. Good job. I'm out of there. All right, good man. Okay, those are pullovers, that's a few quick sets. I did take him out of his rest time, I apologize for my uh, instructional fun stuff here. Steven, where were you feeling that? I felt it right down in there. 
up in here and in my upper chest. You feel it anywhere in your back? Yeah, just right back. There. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a crazy stretch right up in here. Feels so, good. Be safe on these guys. This is something you want to start off with a, uh, a lighter weight on. That's why I kind of like uh, using it for the A by 8 as well. Is, um, you're not going to pick too heavy a weight because you have to do 64 reps of it. So you really find that mind muscle connection and, and, and the position you're supposed to be in without getting injured. Really the only two ways, which is why I really kind of went into how to get off the bench and how to put the weight on and get into the position is because that's really how you get hurt on these. It's not usually going to be how far you go back. The only other thing that I can tell you about this exercise that neither one of us did, which is great, um, is don't bend your arms. So uh, if you're coming down and you're doing this and then you're going back up, well, that's not really uh, 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 what do you call this? Thing? Dumbbell? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's not really a pullover. You just caught me. I do, I, guys, I shoot this stuff live. So that's not really doing a pullover. That's like doing a tricep extension. So um, just try to watch. But that weight, wherever it is, how far away from it is from your head, it stays there. If it's right here, fine. Do these. But it's not this. And it's not this. Okay, just leave your elbows where they go. Done. That's your 90 seconds, buddy. Where are we at here? Abdominals. That's it for you. I'm back. Okay. 8x8 eight eight training abdominals. How this reads is, this is not an 8x8. Eight Train your abdominals for 20 minutes. See ab training options. Now you're gonna to go to the ab training options. There's several different workouts there you can follow. There's circuits, there's just annihilation, there's weight of principle stuff. There's everything basically you need to, to kill your core. So I'm not a firm believer in only doing eight reps for abs unless it's like ridiculously stupidly heavy. Um, but most of the times we, we don't preach that. The positions are unsafe and you can get hurt doing that. So uh, in this case, we're gonna show you a few different examples of what you would do for abs. Steven, show them your abs. We're gonna put them on the spot here. All right, those are abs. Now, Steven, if you were to take everybody in America through an ab workout, four exercises, four of your favorite exercises, what would they be right now? We're going to shoot two sets of them each to give you know everybody an example of how to do it, and maybe I'll try to screw it up and we'll do it wrong so they can see that too. But what would those four exercises be? I would do Roman chairs, okay. hanging tuck-ups is what I call them. They could okay. be leg-ups. Um, I like bicycles. Okay. And then maybe some rope crutch downs. All right, so uh, take me through the first thing you do right now. So right now, probably put this weight away. Come right here. You can go behind and front. You can come up here. Personally, I like to I like to keep my form right here. I'm gonna drive my heels into the ground. So bring them up. I'm standing obnoxiously uh, obnoxiously close to him so that he gets in the mic, guys. So don't. That's why I'm here. Tell us what you're doing, bud. Bringing it up to my chest. How many? I'm gonna do 20. Are you touching your heels and not your toes? That's a big deal. No, I, I like it. Oh, I, I like to touch my heels. Yep. Because it makes it, makes me fully extend. I exhale when I'm coming down. Okay. Up. What's your accountability? How do you know when to stop? <laughs> I hit a point where it just keeps hurting. And then that's when I start actually counting. <laughs> hey, Muhammad Ali! <laughs> okay, how many do we count to? I always have my number. I know what my number is. What do you count to after it hurts so bad you can't do it anymore? I usually go to 15. Oh, he got me by five reps. Well, maybe, maybe, I don't know who, can, who the pain threshold is, is definitely subjective. Come on. When do, when do you hit your pain threshold? Right now. Right now? Yeah. Maybe 15 then. I say the last 10 he can't touch his heels. No touching. One. Yeah. Two. We just made it way harder. That's so hard. Come on. Come on, Steven. You want abs? Cover a magazine? What? Come on. You gotta envision yourself taking more pain than Kimberly. You gotta envision yourself taking more pain than, than Play at a Riches or any one of these top physique athletes in the IFBB. Any one of them. Can you take more pain? That was beautiful. How long's your rest? 160 doing abs. <laughs> okay, show me your abs. Where were the where was that hurt? Up in here, and then when you do oh, you start flex your abs, he's he's out of breath. And I'm out of breath. I'm dying. <laughs> but then when you start pushing your heels to the ground, it engages your lowers and almost your hip flexor, because at the end, like right in here, yep. my legs just got so heavy. Right there, huh? I get super, super tight right there. Yes. Which is why it's so important to do the movement that he was doing. His knees were coming very close to his chest, and when he was coming forward much like the biceps, and a lot of these angles we choose, it's about position, right? So when his body comes forward, 
then his legs are under a lot more pressure than if he's leaning back and his legs are up because they're almost they're laying on him. When he comes forward, he has to keep them bringing up. And anytime your legs break the 90 degrees, okay? Picture my body. This is 90 degrees. Anytime my knees come here, it's abs. Anytime they're down here, most likely it's obliques, or excuse me, it's uh, hip flexors. You gotta watch that. So it, 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 if your belly's in the way, that's where the breathing comes in. You really gotta suck in and remove your belly, pull a vacuum, anything you can do to get that belly out of the way so that you can then uh, have a larger range of motion. Show us one more set, bud. <coughs> Can you do these hands free? Yeah, yes you can, you know you can. Find your balance. Yeah, put your hands behind your head. Woo. I like this structure, I like this fight. He wouldn't, burn, he wouldn't uh, close out this way, he wouldn't burn out this way, but he can fight all these weird muscle groups, stabilizing muscles have to kick in to do this. Good job. Feel my lower back engage it. Yep. Use the leverage of your upper body to go back and forth. You should be able to go flat to knock. Beautiful. There it is. Now go back to your structure movement and knock them out. I just want to mess with them. This is this is your workout. Why am I messing with you? Come on. Okay, what's a variation for this if somebody can't do this anymore? What would you do? Can't do this. Come right here. Ooh, single leg mountain climber crossover. What do you call this? That's what I called it. <laughs> I call these like, can't call them leg ups, but side twists. I, sure. I don't have a name, I just, sure. Stevens. <laughs> Those are Stevens. He made he made these ones up. Those are, I've never seen them. You, I'm going to give you that. You can have Stevens. Those were good. Okay, so um, how long would you do this for? You're knocking out like five minutes? Yeah, I, I like to go about five minutes and then just until, I don't even know what it is, but something, I just know I can't go anymore, then I'll just move on to the next exercise. I like to go as hard as I can for the 20 minutes. I'm not. What's your heart right now? 155, 156. What, what, would you like, what would you like to see your average be while you're training uh, uh, abs? Abs, I, I like to go over 135. At least I know it's uh, Okay, um, well, uh, we're gonna get into the next exercise. All right, guys, we're gonna finish up here the last two exercises on this machine, and we're gonna do ropes. We're following the same uh, protocol for the 20 minutes of abs. Stephen got to choose his own. Instead of going to the website and choosing some exercises, he's got some of his favorites. We wanted to use his brain today. So we've gone through two. This is our third one, essentially uh, five minutes of these exercises, the easiest, most simple way to, to simplify that. So um, in a sense, for the last 10 minutes, we've just been brutalizing ourselves. How much pain can I take? How many sets? How many reps? How Hard can I train my abs? We're 10 minutes into it. We'll finish the last 10. Let's go. Okay, so I uh, I set this to 70 pounds, which Ooh. is the max. All right. And uh, I just like to go until I can't go anymore. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but he wrapped his Versa grips around this, so his hands are not going to be the weakest link. In fact, it doesn't even hurt. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> in that <laughs> position. Stay here. All right. Now, see this line? That's pretty much straight up and down. He went right into the perfect position. Beautiful, Steven. Not a lot's moving, he's not moving back and forth on his butt, nothing else is moving. He's basically hinging right here. It goes up and it goes down. How's it going down? It's not gravity. He's making it go down with his abs. As soon as he gets to the bottom, blow out, blow out, blow out. And then actually to be real, I like to do it exactly opposite too. So I'll suck in on the way up to get that stretch we were talking about earlier on the, uh, on the pullovers. So when, you, when, when you're all the way out like this, as far as you can go, when you, when you suck in, it just rips that lowest down. Come on, Steven, how many are you gonna do, bud? Take it down, take it down. You got a partner here helping you, he'll help you. Get down there. Now bounce your elbows off the bottom. Bounce them off the bottom. Now don't let them come up more than three inches. One, that's four inches. Right there, yeah, right there, right there. Beautiful. <laughs> So we're gonna, uh, you just do as many as you can do with the weight that you can do, and then you'll, you'll lessen the weight, or you'll just keep doing as many as you can do with the same heavy resistance. I like to use as many, same, I keep the same weight the whole time. I like to go heavy, trying to build those lumps. And I, if you're watching, I don't come all the way up for air. I like to just keep it tension on my abs the entire time. Time under tension, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a great theory to follow, especially with your abs. 
So I'm at 150 doing these. So <laughs> how long a rest will you take? Because it's five minutes to go as hard as you can, right? So when you're resting, you know that you only get five minutes to do this. How long will you usually rest? Usually I like to watch my heart rate drop to about 140, then I'm going again. Or drop 10 beats and say they didn't make it to 150. Okay. How, how far a drop did you make it? Um, for me, I, I go off a breathing pattern. If I'm out of breath, I know I'm not going to give it my all. So I do check my heart rate monitor. So it can be anywhere from 10 to 20 beats just based on how dry my mouth is. Sometimes I have my aminos right there. I'm sipping on them. Just depends. All right. So for me, um, I have a baseline. If my heart rate drops below 100 on abs, I have to go again no matter what it is. Even if it's the slowest crunch that doesn't even get your heart rate up, no matter what, I go again if it says 100. Beautiful, Steve. Come on. I want to show you a variation to this. I haven't shown uh, Steven this yet. So just uh, come forward on your knees a tiny bit. Now I want you to put your butt on your heels. Now from that position, I want you to go down. I don't think I can do this weight. Okay, we're going to drop this weight 20 pounds down to 50. Uh, go ahead and take another step back, just a tiny bit back. There you go. Because we want this, we're going to stay... No continuity here, we want this to be straight up and down. Now, when you go all the way down, stay right there. I want you to come up about four inches. Down. 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 Oh Where's that working, Steven? Where's it working? Lower ab? Yeah. Lower ab hard, huh? Because remember, the closer your knees get to your chest, even if you're laying down in a position like this, uh, that's lower abs, guys. Come on, bite it. Bite it. Now leave it down there at the bottom. Just hold it there. Hold it there. If I'm Jason Ellis, I'm, I'm Noel DeGonta, and I'm taking a cover shot right now, and I'm saying, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Can you hold it? Can you hold it? Huh? Can you hold it? Can you hold it? I'm going to give you $10,000. You're on a game show. I got a knife against somebody you love. Can you hold it? Hold it! Done. I thought I was going to pass out. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to pass it out. Okay, well, That's a really good idea. They're, they're, they're both really good, but did you notice the difference? Yeah, hope completely lowers. Where are we building? Where do we want to build? Yeah, if you can get those lower abs in. Most everybody gets four top nuggets. Most everybody gets a beautiful four top nuggets. Not everybody. If you work real hard, you get four. Um, the bottom ab, even if it's there and there's thin skin underneath it, underneath it, usually it's not a very big bump because uh, much like leg extensions or any of these fluid movements, you end up just training right in and out of that sticking point. So. Um, by training only in that sticking point, a lot of people say I hate quarter reps. Well, I love them. You know, listen to who you want, but I like quarter reps. That, in a sense, was a very quarter rep, right? Yeah. He put his elbows to the ground and he came up about four inches, five inches, and then right back down. Talk about time under tension. And the, the, what was under tension was only the bottom two abs uh, as the priority. Huh? Did you not feel it right there? Right. As opposed to everything else that's usually up here. Right there is where we want. Holy yeah. cow. Did you like that? Yeah, and you can feel your belly button air in there. Like it is. Okay, it's show pain. us one more set of that. And then, uh, actually, yeah, show us one more set. Or is it, if you have another variation to this that we can learn? Um, so, if I am going to do obliques or some side twists with it, I will go from side to side. Yeah, show us. Also. So, you're going to do seated again? Yep, seated. Okay. Or knees. Notice his breathing. Every time he comes down, it's and what that does is that that almost is a reminder to keep breathing. Anything you know done in repetition, even when your mind loses, like you don't think about breathing when you run most of the time, you're breathing. But if you can, it can control your run a little bit. So by default, if you practice this, always breathing out on the bottom, you'll always breathe out on the bottom, even when you're not thinking, and that will put you in the right position to do the exercise correctly. If you, want to, if you do want to switch it up, just reverse your breathing pattern, like Dave was saying earlier. Where? Suck in, coming up. And you're going to get that stretch up in here and that. Yeah, yeah anytime I'm, anytime I'm uh, coming up, I'll, I'll blow out for that. Um, the other one I like, guys, is this is, um, you know, Stephen said he doesn't do a lot of this coming up, up here stuff. It's all time and attention down here. Whether he be on his heels, going down, or he's he's back here like we were we were showing you. Um, 
I also really like to take advantage of this stretch. So if you do have a chance and you're in the middle of a set or you get your 20 second rest or you're, you've just played the pain game perhaps, uh, take advantage of this stretch. Get in there. That's be, it. And to be honest, these are his secrets. Like I went to him because he had a great six pack and I was like, I want to know the exercises this guy does to have a six pack. And these are those exercises. So we shoot a little redundantly time. guys. We should, we showed uh, you know, this isn't a, a 20 second picture and some voiceover. We go through a lot here because there's so many different ways to do it. Right. David Kimberly does it his, his own way, you know, and I, this isn't new. I didn't, you know, invent something I learned from the other guys. Steven's learned it from me and he's gonna do it his own way and it'll be Steven's way. To a point. Nothing's new. Nothing's been relabeled. We're just showing you how to do it using different words, different examples, different body types. And uh, now that the equipment's evolved, different kinds of equipment. Steven, you get one more exercise for your 20 minutes, buddy. What is it? I'm gonna do some hanging crunch ups. Hanging crunch ups, show us how it goes. <coughs> Come on around, guys. Here, you can pop right there. Hey. Should I just go? Yeah. Okay. So, great thing about bursa grips. Um, usually, my grip, like through my hands and forearms, would burn out before I'm actually hitting and engaging my abs. But with these, they actually, I can stay up here a whole lot longer, even with a couple fingers. Okay, do that again. I love to use bursa grips. And when I'm gonna come up on them, my hand makes this motion and I'm gonna tuck the actual grip around the bar up here. It's nice because I can do it simultaneously at the same time instead of having to wrap it with straps. So, here we go. Love those things. Guys, a lot of different things to skin the cat, right? Straps do work and have worked for years. But then they came out with grips. And grips just work better and they work faster, which makes them a better product. When, uh, when, when, when you have a 20 second rest and it takes you 20 seconds to, uh, to release your hands from a, from a barbell or a dumbbell in 20 more seconds to get them gripped back on, well you're not following your rest using the old school method of, of uh, attaching something heavier to you than your fingers can hold. Uh, thus the Versa Grips, thus the, the big push for, for those uh, and, and for people to understand how really important they are. You do not want to be as strong as your fingers are because I'm telling you they're not very strong, I don't care who you are. So, when I'm on this, sometimes I do, if, my, if I'm tall enough and my feet can hit the ground, I do like to kind of let them hit the ground so I'm not swinging all over the place so that I'm engaging my abs a lot more and I'm not swinging. So if you did see me, I'm not trying to cheat, just trying to stay balanced and I'm not swaying or using that momentum to get my abs sure. up cheating. You know, if you're swaying, your abs aren't doing the work. Flat out. They're, they're, they're not. That's you manipulating the ability to do an exercise, which is still very impressive, I and mean, your heart rate can be very high. Yeah. But if the intention is to build muscle while exercising, rather than working on your cardio and getting in great shape, um, you might want to not swing. You might want to follow the, the, the structure, environment, the reason why we shoot these videos, and stay in the position and just take that pain. You know, sometimes it's the ability to do the exercise, and sometimes it's you're avoiding the pain in that area and wanting to do the exercise at the same time, faking out to yourself like you were doing it. That means you're not doing it. Stick with the, the, the motion, stick with the position, and either lessen or, or, or raise your weight. Don't move to, to uh, either look cool in the gym or to uh, act like you're doing an exercise you're not. Sure. Show us one more step, bud. Show us a variation of this one. Okay, so come up here, lock my grips into place, and I'm just gonna do leg lifts. Leg lifts? These are bent legged leg lifts, beautiful. Back for a couple. Beautiful. Now pop them up. Bring them down. Up. 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 When you have a training partner, this is why it gets fun. Up. Where do we decide abs happen? Above 90. Above 90. Get them up. Good job. Good job. And these do get my heart, my heart rate the highest out of all ab exercises. I feel like you're engaging so much of your body for these, bringing up your legs, which are pretty heavy, <laughs> on your ass. Now, I would say um, we let Stephen choose these exercises, and I love it. It's a great example of a four, 
amazing exercises you can do over 20 minutes. The only thing that uh, I would change or make a variation to is I would have done these first. Yep. And the reason why is they are uh, the hardest exercise. They are the mass building exercises because of the weight that is uh, that is being used and, and manipulated to, to do the exercise, right? Yeah, so, definitely. So uh, most of the time your leg ups and your knee ups, your incline sit ups, those are to be done first so that you can uh, uh, make sure that the the muscle building is out of the way. A lot of times abs, a lot of the exercise they're doing is is, uh, is is pretty boy, is to make it pretty, is to form it. You know, I'll do my tricep kickbacks at the end of a workout, because that's forming the loaf of bread, it's giving me the fingers, it's really, it's molding the muscle tear. And, and this is all me wording freely what's really happening, so there's not a lot of science to that, but to me there's, there is. And, and so, Stick with the heavy building stuff, then yeah. get in with the pretty boy stuff, and you end up with everything you want. Sounds good. Cut. Cut. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, the accountability of the heart rate monitor. Right now, Stephen and I just went through how to do an 8x8 uh, workout. In the end, we spent about as much time, 40 minutes, as you would do doing uh, the entire workout. We were just shooting exercises, going back and forth, doing an educational. Stephen came to me with his watch, and we, I forgot to share this. And ass I am for not sharing this. Stephen, um, show us what this watch does. Right now, it's showing his activity. Today was at 73%. That's good. Okay. <clears throat> Let me go back to it. He's going to go into his files on his watch, because uh, usually it's available right as soon as you're done, but well, the cool thing is it also keeps track of what you've done. So. Today's Monday, he worked out, um, for how long? 54 minutes. He was in uh, each zone, it shows him his zones. His average heart rate, because this is big. What shows effort? Anytime your heart rate, guys, I don't care who you are, anytime your heart rate is above 130 for an extended period of time, especially an average on a workout that's almost an hour, that shows effort. If you think you can go try hard, harder, fine. That's how we're supposed to feel, we always want more. But there has to be a good enough. And, and that's what this watch does. It, you never look in the mirror like what you see ever, I don't care who you are. So uh, you, you take that as the po most positive way you can. Everybody wants more. You always got to be happy with what you have, but wanting more, and that's a weird place in your mind. Either way around, sometimes you don't know if you should feel good about your workout because you think you could always do more. 130 is enough, guys. It's enough. Your muscles will, will come. The bumps are being built. The fat is being burned. I promise you 130 is solid. So any, he's at 138. That's beautiful. His max heart rate was 181. That shows pure effort. That shows if I was fighting a bear, if I really wanted muscle, if, if, if people are screaming at me, I'm wasting my time at the gym. No, I'm not. Look, my heart rate was 180. Ah, that's, not, that's not wasting time. We burned 657 calories in 40 minutes. Now, if Steven uh, needed to know uh, how to adjust his diet from there, he would go, okay, if, if today I wanted to lose weight, I'd have to be negative calories, so let's say I just ate uh, what I burn every day. Say he burns 2,100 calories a day doing nothing. If he ate 2,100 calories and he burned off 600 during the workout, then every um, week, we'll say, he will lose one pound of fat. Done. Now let's say he wants to lose two pounds of fat, and that's all he can work out. He can only work out, um, let's say, six or seven days a week at the 600 calories, then then um, I would have to take 600 calories away uh, uh, or, or 500 calories away from his daily diet, from the 2100. So, if you're following me here, I would have Steven eat, um, let's say, uh, 1700 calories, or 1600 calories a day, and if he's burning 600 calories a day, by the end of the week, given that he would burn 2100 uh, calories being alive, by the end of the week, he will lose two pounds of fat. That's simply how easy this stuff is. So uh, you get to hire coaches like David Kimberly to dumb it up for you and, and uh, to really give you a plan and a, a, an exact protocol and equation to follow, yes. Or if, if, you, if you're a done, uh, done for yourself person and you really want you know, to figure it out, isn't that an easy way to manipulate it? Yep, yeah. Now let's say that thing said 500, what would you do if you know you need to burn six? Take 100 away from my, what I'm eating. But well, let's say um, if, if, uh, if you, you can't take away any more food, because if we're worried about metabolic damage, you can't just starve yourself, what would you do? Go until it's at 100. Yes! <laughs> yes, yes, the accountability of the watch. If you know that um, Utah is 20 more miles away and you've driven all the way from LA to get to Utah, and you look down at your, at your GPS and your phone, which this is GPS on our, on our body, uh, to get to where we're trying to go, right? And, uh, and you look down at your GPS on your phone and it says you have 20 miles left till you get to Utah. Would you stop? 
Would you go, I'm tired? Would you go, oh, I'm dumb stuff, I'm dumb driving? No, you drive the next 20 miles because you know for a fact that in 20 miles you're gonna be there. If you're trying to lose two pounds of fat a week and you're short 100 calories, this allows you to, to, to drive the extra 10 miles, 20 miles, to, to work off the extra 100 calories to make sure that you're going to reach your goal. The goal is you talk, the goal is losing fat. You need a GPS for that goal, and that's what this is. Any other tips or questions for the 8x8? Um, variety, mix it up. Don't keep doing the same workouts that you're doing all the time. That's what I see most commonly at the gym. Whose, people, whose bodies aren't changing, I watch them, they're doing the same exercises, so switch it up, have variety, and seriously, use your GPS, because that's where I get all my guys. I, I, guys, I'm almost to the point now where I make fun of people that don't wear one. I'm almost to that point. They've been out long enough. Technology's been out long enough. Make fun of your buddy who's late to the party or late to work that doesn't have a GPS on his phone. Make fun of the guy, because it's been out long enough. Unless you have a flip phone, you don't like the size of your phone, or you're just old school, and you don't care. But we love those people, we'll leave them aside. But anybody else, especially if you're late to work, if you just can't seem to get to, late, to work on time, you're new to the area. You're new to, you're new to, you're new to the area. You don't know how, to, how long it takes to get to certain places. You don't have a GPS on your phone. I'm making fun of you. You deserve to be made fun of. If you have a goal and you walk into a gym and you don't quite know what you're doing there, you're not an exact perfect, you're not one of the 1% that can say, oh, I just adjust my diet every week depending on what I look like. Those guys are fine too because they can't. They're good enough. But if, 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 if you're walking into a place like that, I think... If the intention is to build muscle and or burn fat or lose fat as fast as possible, most of us drive the speed limit because we want to get, we're going fast enough, you got to have one of these. Yep. It, it, it adjusts everything you do and it gives you a warm fuzzy. You know, I, was, I was talking to a buddy the other day and I said, how many of us go driving to uh, uh, a location and we, we have a GPS on our phone and we're looking at it. Now we've got a little voice on there that tells us when to turn left, when to turn right, how long we have till we get there, blah, blah, blah. We, we're halfway there. How many of us still look at the phone to make sure we're on our way? How many of us still look down and go, okay, I'm just making sure I'm there. It's a sense of anxiety as humans we have to reach our goal. Yep. I have that on my watch. I, I, I'll step in the mirror at any given time and not be at my goal. I'll be like, ah, my skin needs a little, I need a bump here, a little there, or, or, or whatever it is I, I feel like I'm lacking. <laughs> but if I had something to look down and go, but what I'm missing here will be there, what would that be? What can I look down and get that confidence from? That's the heart rate monitor. Because it's proven math through technology that if, if you make this thing what it's supposed to say, and I built an entire dot com around it, you can transform your body. And you have that anxiety reliever. Just like on the phone, on the way to, to whatever location is, you have that anxiety reliever that you are going to reach your goal, that you're going to be on time to your goal, and um, that you're going to make it within four feet of your goal. Just like the little voice on, on Siri or whatever the GPS thing you have is, it tells you, turn right now or you've arrived in your destination location in four feet. Well, that's what this thing does in a, in a, in a separate sort of analogy way. It beeps at you too fast when you're going too fast. I don't know if you guys knew that, but you could actually work out too hard. Um, and it beeps slow when you're going too slow. So just like the little voice telling you, da 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 you actually even have that too. So that's what I love about the Harry Monitor. Any closing words? Anything else? Um, I talk a lot, don't I? No, you're good. You definitely I do. I, a lot of I do. I do. I do. No, you're good. <laughs> yeah, join Denver Kim, or KimberlyPlan.com. Well, that was good. That that you know he gets credit for that. That was good. <laughs> Anybody else that says join KimberlyPlan.com is, uh, you get credit too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's that's. I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. You came that's all it. the way from Utah. That's it. By the way, he doesn't live here. He came all the way from Utah. That's I came it. from Utah. That's it. Yeah. Um, Watch out of Hollywood. I'm coming to take over. Or um, if anybody ever does something, I'm going to do something back to him. Nothing? <laughs> Not right now. Okay. I'll have it. more.